Hello, Ted Greenfield, over 50 and learning to fly, and this may be the best way to get your private pilot's license. So I have had a bunch of emails and a bunch of comments recently about one question. What is the best way to get your private pilot's license? Look, getting your private pilot's license doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out process taking a couple of years and costing tens of thousands of dollars. It actually can be relatively smooth, it can be done very efficiently, and it could be a quick process for you if you start with this mindset. Treat it like a job. Treat getting your private pilot's license as a work project, a life project, or even a home renovation project. You'll need a plan, you'll need deadlines, you'll need milestones, and an objective, and of course, your goal. And the goal is passing your written and getting your private pilot's license. The first step is get the written exam out of the way. You can do this online, and the best online ground school for your private pilot's license is M0A. Jason Shepard's content is amazing, it's instructionally solid, and it's just well done. M0A is a subscription-based platform, so you just pay for it as long as you need it or as long as you want it. So you'll need to formulate a study plan. Start with the end in mind and work backwards. So here's how I did it. I devoted one month to getting the written exam completed and passed. Weeks one, two, and three, I worked on the M0A ground school and I devoted about two hours a day to taking the courseware, studying, and doing the practice exams. I listened to the courseware during my commute, I did some lessons at lunch at work, and when I got home. And during this time, I was constantly taking the free King online private pilot's license quizzes. But I set it to 10 questions. That way, each quiz took less than 10 minutes, but it conditioned me to think for the test. At first I started, I was kind of bummed out. My scores were in the 50s and 60s. But after week two, they shot up to the 80s, 90s, and even a few 100s. Setting the quizzes to 10 questions was really helpful because it gave me that immediate gratification I needed. Also, it got me thinking in terms of the test. After my third week, I passed the M0A course and I was signed off to take the exam. Then I bought this. The Private Pilot Test Prep Book is a wonderful study resource. I started taking the questions at the end of each chapter, and this alone was really one of the best preps I ever did for the actual written exam. It has the actual questions, and it really prepares you for how the questions are written and what to expect. Now, remember what I said about being flexible before? Well, I had to add another week onto my prep, so I took another two weeks to finish this book and I still did about two hours a day, and at the same time, I took the King free practice tests online. But then, as I started to get into it, I started to get in 90s and the high 90s on every practice test I took. So after week five, I was ready. I scheduled my exam, and in one hour and 30 minutes, it was all over with an 86%. I was done with the written exam in five weeks. And as my instructor told me, you'll never have to see that test again. Getting the written out of the way was 80% of the battle. Now, I just had to get the flight time done. The way I did it is I did it every weekend for about four months. On Saturdays and Sundays, I did a morning session of two hours, broke for lunch, and then I did an afternoon session of about two hours. This averaged about six to eight hours of flight training a weekend. But looking back, I really should have done it a different way. I should have treated it like a job, and I just should have taken three weeks off of work and went at it full time. If you can average four hours of flight training a day, you can get it all done in three weeks, and you will be completely focused on the task at hand. Remember, the one thing that breaks up momentum in your flight training is interruptions, and that happened to me numerous times through the years. If you take the time off and give it 100% of your attention, you can have all your flight time done within a month. Start off with this mindset right away and apply it to your flight training and you'll be better all the way around.
Now, another super important thing, it's kind of obvious, but you've got to find an instructor that you can work with and that works well with you. If you take your flight training full time, the instructor will probably like it better because of the consistency. You'll also be able to work better with them because you guys will fall into a rhythm. I don't want to be light on this part, but this is a lot of work and it's going to be challenging. But ask yourself one question, how bad do you want it? You will have to work for it. If this has been a dream of yours for quite some time, now's the time to get it because there's no better time. Doing your flight training like this all at once will help build your proficiency and get you started right. Ask yourself one question, which is better? 60 hours of flight training over six weeks or 60 hours of flight training over six months. Now I realize that not everybody can take that kind of time off. And when I started, I couldn't take that kind of time off, but I got as close to it as I could. And the best part is you will achieve your dream a lot faster. So get your flight training done all at once. In about 60 days, you can go from zero flight time and no exam, and about two months later, if you schedule it all right and plan it out right, you could be a pilot, a licensed pilot, in two months. So here it is. I hope it helped. I hope you learned something. And remember, if you are over 50, get up and get in the air. Thanks for watching.